Sports.com. News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on your Wednesday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. Another major step towards changing distractive driving laws here in the state. What well, lawmakers approved and the next hurdle that could also be cleared in just hours. Police officers and firefighters working together to get results in our schools with a program teaching the joy of reading. How they're coupling that with safety lessons and what it means to these kids. Then the latest schemes. Officials say criminals are posing as your cable company trying to rip you off. What to watch out for. Plus, a 92-year-old woman recalling becoming a pilot back in the 1960s. How she stepped outside the norm and what she has to say to female pilots now. And CJ from Mix 105.1 is in the house today. We're talking Adele. And could airlines start charging you by weight? We're mixing it up coming up this hour. Those are our big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. Today. Live from News 6 and ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 9. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Candace Campos. We are so happy you're with us on this Wednesday. I'm Julie Broughton. And I'm Bridget Ellison. We always talk about so many topics mm -hmm. here on News 6 at 9. And, you know, we have our new weekly feature with Kirsten, uh, talking to doctors and talking about things that are sometimes hard to talk about, even in the office. But today we're doing it, and today we're addressing the topic of sexual health. So no topics off limits, so we will right. be seeing what the doctor has to say. She'll be in a little bit later. Yeah, those conversations can be hard to have, but they're so important mm -hmm. to have. Also, we are checking in with what's going on in our schools this week, and I absolutely love our story this week. We went to a preschool where the Orlando Fire Department is getting results with their program called Books and Badges. So we catch up with a lieutenant who was reading some books to the kids, letting them check out the fire engine, and the kids acted like superheroes showed oh, up, so yes. they were so excited. And it really is such a sweet story. It's a good way to get them engaged. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, and every child lights up when they see a fire truck. Yeah. I mean, know? I light up when I see one. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. As long as they're not coming to my house, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I know we all light up on Wednesdays because CJ is yes. coming. He's mixing it up. It's every Wednesday. And we're talking two different topics. We have the Adele split that we were taught, we, we mentioned in the newscast a couple days ago. And we're also talking about weighing before you get into an airplane. We're not talking about your baggage. Oh, they're boy. They're talking about charging you for your weights. Mm -mm. I don't think that's going to go I don't well. know if that's yeah. going to fly, but we will be talking with CJ coming up in just a little bit. But first, though, a huge victory in our push to strengthen Florida's texting while driving laws. Yesterday, the full state house overwhelmingly voted to make distracted driving a primary offense, and we could see another major step in Tallahassee today. The Senate is set to vote on a companion bill. Senate Bill 76 focuses on mandating drivers only use hands-free devices, and new six anchor Matt Austin has made repeated trips to tally, pressing to get results on this, and he was there as the House vote happened, and this could mean life-saving changes, Matt. It really could, ladies, if you think about the tens of thousands of distracted driving crashes that happen every year. If just a fraction of those were taken away, we're talking about lives, we're talking about a lot of backs and a lot of property that would be saved because of this legislation. Now, I'm standing in a pretty eerily calm Capitol building right now. Not too many people have seen a couple of tour groups and a few senators walk by, but I am right outside the Senate chambers at 10 a.m. in less than an hour. They're going to open up those doors and they're going to start taking care of the business of the day. Now, one of the items that is expected to be taken up is their hands-free bill, or they could vote on the House bill that was just sent over yesterday. That bill did pass overwhelmingly, 104 to 9. And you might wonder, why were there nine no votes on this? Well, a lot of that had to do with racial profiling. Take a listen. But I have got to bring the concerns forward for people that look like me. I'd be derelict if I did not do that. Racism is still alive. We know that. But this law is based on saving lives from people texting and driving. If you don't see that, you're blind. So several lawmakers in the House say they were worried about how a texting and driving law would be enforced, but after hours of discussion, again, only nine of them voted against the bill, and an overwhelming majority showed support. 104 to 9, huge. I mean, this is, you know, this is legislation that affects every Floridian and guest in our state. This is a big deal. 
So where does this leave us now? Well, the House bill, it passed all of its committees, and then it passed overwhelmingly on the floor. The Senate bill has also passed all of its committees. Now we are waiting to see what happens in the full Senate, and we really don't know what the final bill will look like because the Senate bill looks different from the House bill, and they're going to have to come up with a compromise before they send that to the governor's desk. We'll be covering it for you all day today live in Tallahassee. Ladies, back to all you. All right. Really exciting news there, Matt. I'm sure things will liven up there in your uh, chambers soon. Thank you. <laughs> it is so exciting finally to see some progress being made. You know, New Six and Matt specifically have been working mm -hmm. on this since September 2016 when Matt was rear-ended by a driver who admitted to texting while driving and he was seriously hurt and has made it his mission. So, so nice to see progress being made. It is exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll be talking with him in a little bit, uh, a little bit later, uh, more about his journey and, and that mm -hmm. personal mission that he has. And you can catch up on all of that on clickorlando.com slash driving change and look back at the timeline. Yeah. Well, the Orlando Magic were hoping for a late spark in their series against Toronto, but unfortunately, the playoff run has come to an end. The Magic lost Game 5 to the Raptors last night. All right, now it was a game dominated by defense. Now, the final score, 115 to 96. Now, this was the Magic's first trip to the playoffs in seven years. We were hoping it was let lucky seven, right? Well, in like 2012, they're going home after the first round. The future, though, looks bright. The team says they'll be back and that they're only going to get even better, which, you know, it's... It was such a good, I mean, I think it was a very successful season. Mm -hmm. I yes, mean, absolutely. heading to the playoffs is certainly, uh, you know, nothing to be, you know, ashamed of, but we'll continue on. Maybe another yes. round. That's closer right. Next, Onward next and season. upward. Yes, yes, right. Let's get a look at how the roads are looking this morning. Traffic safety expert Trooper Steve has your pinpoint traffic brought to you by Napleton Automotive. And Steve, I know it has been a rough morning out there. It has, Julie, and that's why we're fully right here. This is a traffic alert. All eastbound lanes of I-4 at Maitland Boulevard completely shut down. But the good news is we do have this semi-truck back on its wheels, so we're making a little bit of progress. This is DOT camera showing you why we're shut down. You can see Crews are working hard right now to get this completely moved. All eastbound lanes are closed. However, if you're on Maitland Boulevard and you're trying to head on to eastbound I-4, you can still do that because the ramp is open. It's the main lines that's completely shut down. They did ask activate risk. Risk is a program comes out and they try to clear this road as quick as possible. They have a lot of heavy equipment and that's what they're doing out there right now. But the delays are through downtown Orlando. We're talking about a five to 10 mile backup is what they're predicting here in a little bit. Use 1792 up to 436 as your alternate. Ladies, back to you. All right, Steve, thank you. We just said a few minutes ago, we are confident mm -hmm. that uh, kids, basically all kids light up when they see a big red fire truck. And throw in a school visit from Orlando Fire with a truck and some books, and you've got an exciting day. I was there for the visit at Kid Zone Learning Preschool, where OFD is encouraging kids to amp up their summer reading goals and is getting results in our schools. Okay, we're going to read a book. It's called Clifford the Firehouse Dog. For Orlando Fire Department Lieutenant Jason Alisea. I asked the firefighters if Clifford could help them. They thought he was the right color for the job. Reading to kids mm -hmm. like the students here at Kid Zone Learning Preschool away. is an important part of building community relationships. Because in a scary situation, a lot of times they might be too afraid to, to um, respond to us as we're approaching. Um, we don't want to be intimidating to them. So if they see us in, in everyday you know, walks of life, then they're more likely to turn to us in an emergency situation. Today's visit is part of OFD's Books and Badges program, using favorites like Clifford to teach stop, Drop. And now roll. Roll this way. Roll, roll to me. Roll. 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 Keep going. Keep going. And no visit from the fire department is complete without this. Go the other way. Now push it forward. They're in awe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're just amazed with, with, with the trucks, the lights, the sounds. I want to be a police. I want to be a firefighter. Alisea says he hopes he not only inspires students career-wise, but also encourages the kids to step up those summer reading goals. When kids could get involved with electronics and television, um, but definitely reading is way more beneficial for them. And so we want to encourage them along with their parents also to set goals, uh, read a book, two books, maybe five books this summer, and you'll benefit greatly from it. Julie Broughton, Getting Results, News. 
OFD partners with the Orlando Police Department to visit 78 locations for books and badges. About 20 firefighters are involved in the program. And I tell you, when those kids came out to see the engine and got to, you know, spray some water, they were screaming like Beyonce had walked <laughs> in. So they were not going to forget that. No, it was such an exciting day for them, and they were asking him if he could read more books, so they were so engaged. And, you know, the lieutenant there made a great point that the kids need to see them in these everyday situations, so when an emergency arises, as they know that these are the people they go to. Yeah. yeah, they'll be wanting to go back soon, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Well, every Wednesday, we welcome in our friend CJ Robinson from Mix 105.1. And he's here with some trending stories and entertainment news. Last week, news broke that Adele and her husband split, and that now has fans wondering if more music is on the way. After all, the Hello singer is known for her breakup ballads. We'll talk about Adele's album Chatter coming up. You're watching News 6, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by the Orlando Solar Bears. Tonight. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. All right, it's time to talk entertainment on News 6 at 9. So you know what that means. It's time to mix it up. <laughs> yeah, CJ from Vix 105.1 joins us live it. now. It feels like a 90s <laughs> sitcom. I know, yeah. I feel like I need to just do like a slow turn. Like, <laughs> right, yeah, very you know. soap opera. Yeah. A soap opera turn. Get fancy yes. with this. Well, uh, you know, we want to start off with some news. Adele's breakup, unfortunately, from her longtime partner. Mm -hmm. It's kind of surprising because she's very private with her, her children, uh, with her child. And now fans are wondering if this means more music is on the way. So, but, you know, she and Simon had been together for, I believe it was like seven years. They have a son, uh, six-year-old Angelo, together. Mm -hmm. And she is very private. Like, she has mm -hmm. said, like, that's my private life. They don't choose to be in this business. It's my choice. And a lot of celebrities are that way. Yeah. Um, so it was a shock when she announced it. But fans, this is the part that kind of mm -hmm. I'm on the fence with. Because how many times have we said, you know, oh, I would just love a good cry. Let me put on Adele. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. But fans immediately after flooded Twitter and Facebook and Instagram with the hashtag Adele's marriage is over party. And they were celebrating the okay, fact that she... Okay, that's not nice. Yeah, and that's so awful. And to me, that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. Even fans were doing that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, she's probably going to go into the studio. And yes, we're probably going to get some deeper material out of this. But that's not really what we should be focusing on right. here. You know? Um, she has been in the studio. So I think that maybe there's going to be a nice mix of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think to see things on social media about that, we have to remember these pe these are people at the end of the day. Right, mm -hmm. and especially when you have a child. I mean, a breakup or a divorce is always painful, yeah. but when you are splitting from a longtime father of your child, you know, that's, yeah. that's painful. So but, we need to give her a little breathing space. I, I, I agree. And, um, you know, there, there were already rumors last year that we would potentially have new music from her end of this year, next year. She had said after the end of the 25 World Tour, she's like, I don't know if I'm going to tour for a while. She's like, I want to raise my son. She mm -hmm. is a fantastic mother mm -hmm. watching her with her son um, and, the, and, the, and the few clips that we've seen of them yeah. um, is just such a beautiful thing and so I honestly hope she just spends time with him. Yeah, I, I, I look at her sort of like uh, Sade, like she'll probably put lots of space between her albums but have mm -hmm. a very long, you know, great career. Yes, oh, yeah. she's so talented. You get but, better material that way. Yeah, I mean, and exactly. the statement that, that they did send out said that they're committed to raising their son together lovingly so you can tell that this is something that means a lot to them to be able to continue to be mother and father and you know have him first and she is so private so i think it's important that we respect their privacy right. and don't post things like that on social media no. right. it's just gross that is gross Tacky. Yeah. it's a reflection of yourself 100 yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all right so when you pack for a flight passengers are often mindful of how much their luggage will weigh so now we may have to consider another weight issue and cj uh -oh. if you tell me that i'm gonna have to step on the scale <laughs> at oia i'm just going to start taking a bus I just won't now. go. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I will walk. Yeah. I will walk across the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. Um, so apparently um, airlines, obviously, they have to figure out how much fuel they need for the flight. So they do actually kind of gauge how much people weigh. Apparently there's an average. I think it's like men are like 197. Women, they say, are like 150. And children are 77 pounds. So they're already guessing kind of mm -hmm. what the average person weighs. Um, but this company, Fuel Matrix, they're out of the United Kingdom. They're saying, hey, like we would love to figure out a way to make it more efficient for 
airlines. So that way we reduce their carbon uh, footprint and how much fuel they have to have, which could honestly reduce prices. So they're saying like, you know, when you go to the check-in kiosk and you know, they're all self-help anyway, why not put a sensor on the ground that does just kind of weigh it, doesn't tell you about it, it just sends it to the airline so they know about an approximate weight. It doesn't have to put the person's name, it's just like, you know, male, 187 pounds. So it'll be discreet. That's the thing, because oh, okay. they know they can't say, right. hey, step on that scale. People are going to be like, you're already putting me through, you know, security screenings and patting me down and going mm -hmm. through my bag. Like, what else are we going to do? Right. So an agent's not going to be screaming your weight out to someone in the back. <laughs> yeah, could you down. imagine? <laughs> and that's what I was imagining. Oh, yeah. And I was feeling very sad for all of us. Yeah. But so, again, this is all um, just kind of what if right now. And okay. it seems to be kind of focused in Europe. But we all know that once one airline sees it, mm -hmm. they're all mm -hmm. going to start doing it. So I think if it's a discreet way to do it, maybe yeah. passing through TSA, we don't know about it. It just sends like, hey, it's this flight to this place. I think at that point it might be okay, but I yeah. think if we're going to be, like you said, you know, here we go. No. No. Anybody want to guess? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, if it is going to save a couple of bucks here and there yeah. for flights and it is going to be discreet, yeah. I don't yeah. see anything right. super yeah. wrong with that. I actually yeah. like that better than those stand-up seats people are talking about. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. I would rather you t tell me what my weight is than yeah. stand right. up for six hours. Just right. strap me on the top of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And on Friday, you've got something yes. to remind your viewers so and your been, you've been So you've been pretty on with your Have forecasts. I? They've been some yes. pretty great good, forecasts. Good, good. Everyone has been so pleased with them. Yes. So if you want a personalized pinpoint accurate forecast, maybe you just are doing something this weekend or next week, or you're just like, hey, I just want to sit at home on my couch, but I want to know what it's going to be like outside. <laughs> yes. Candace can help. And you can reach out on our uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Mix1051, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be more than happy to. I love it. And I love having a chat with you again. I mean, you know. You know, they're pretty great chats. Yeah, CJ we, twice a week. You can't beat that, right? <laughs> well, you know, also we have our meme of the day. So let's roll it. See how this kind of affects our weather because, you know, <laughs> it's that time of the year when Aww. you finally kill that mosquito. How yeah. satisfied do what you feel? What animal is that? That's it's a, a sweet seal. little face. Mm -hmm. Oh, a my seal. goodness. I need one of those to add to my collection. Yeah. Add to your collection of animals. <laughs> yes, yes. Dog chinchilla seal. All right, let's check out this beautiful Winter Park sunset from Ooh. Adriana Ivashinsky. So she's when she's not out one. investigating wow. things, she's taking beautiful pictures. Is that over by Shake Shack, I believe? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just love palm tree silhouettes. Aren't they just the prettiest mm -hmm. things ever? Yeah. Now I can go for some Shake Shacks. All right, let's talk about your weather forecast for today. Uh, Troy built this graphic. We have a lot of AC and fan units because it is going to be toasty today and tomorrow, nearing 90 degrees for two days before the rain starts to roll in. Right now, though, we're at 71 degrees in Orlando, 69 degrees in Kissimmee. We're in the low 70s. We've been in the 70s in Brevard County for a few hours already. 69 in Daytona Beach and 68 in Leesburg. As we take you here hour by hour, so you can kind of plan out for a day, it is going to be hot. Temperatures 88 degrees, a lot more humidity is also going to be a factor, making it feel even warmer. Plenty of sunshine, no rain to speak of, and rain chances are going down a little bit for Saturday. We're down to only 10, per 10 to 20 percent for both Saturday and Sunday. But look, your rain chances does go up to about 60 percent on Friday. So it looks like we could have kind of a repeat performance of rain on Friday, but a pretty nice looking weekend ahead. It won't be as cool as it was last weekend, but hey, we're talking about mostly dry conditions. It will be warm but dry both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, so that's looking Saturday good. forecast looking great. I know, mm -hmm. but we have to deal with the heat for a few yeah. days though. All right, well these days it seems like cable companies are constantly upcharging their customers. Now some customers are reporting offers that seem too good to be true. But before you accept, we have an alert. The new warning about criminals pretending to be with your cable company. Can fly. Living in Florida, we're no stranger to snakes. <laughs> it seems like this constantly comes up, our snake friends. We have our fair share of snake stories in the news, especially this time of year. And just like us, they don't love the cold weather. But you like to name yours. You and Kirsten like to name right, yours. Right, minus snakes. Brian, Brian, who lives outside my front door. Mm -hmm. Kind of spooks you every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But since you could be seeing more now that it's warmer, y'all need to know which ones to avoid completely. ClickOrlando.com's Brianna Bowles is here now to show us which snakes are the most dangerous. Well, personally, I want to avoid all of them. So There'll be no naming snakes for me, but if you're out enjoying the weather, you have a better chance of seeing one. The good news here, of the 50 snake species native to Florida, only six are poisonous. But some harmless snakes can fool you by impersonating dangerous ones when trying to avoid predators. So how can you tell them apart? Well, our partners at Florida Today put together this guide to help you. And first, 
Wildlife officials say the easiest way to tell scarlet king snakes from coral snakes is to remember that coral snakes have black round noses and the non-venomous scarlet king snake has a red pointed nose. You can see that right there. And you can also remember the saying, if red touches yellow, it's bad for a fellow. If red touches black, he's a friend of Jack. So next up, it can be pretty tough to tell a banded water snake from a cotton mouth since all brown snakes look pretty similar. But a cotton mouth is a semi-aquatic vitamin are often found near freshwater, and its bite can be deadly. Banded water snakes can make things tricky by flattening their heads to look like vipers. The visual differences here, a cotton mouth has a heavy body and a blocky wedge-shaped head. A water snake has a slender body and a small head with no distinct neck. All right, now let's talk hog noses and copperheads, two things I don't ever want to talk about again. Hog noses are harmless, but they do try to mimic vipers or cobras. Copperheads are the ones you want to avoid, so if you come across a patchy brown snake, use your ears because copperheads don't make noise, but a hog nose will hiss when impersonating. Now they also have rounder, puffier heads and black eyes and copperhead's eyes are yellow. Now the differences between a rattlesnake and an eastern indigo snake are a bit more obvious. Indigo snakes can be up to seven feet long with black or dark blue scales and you can pick out a rattlesnake by its spotty coloring and triangular head and its less lengthy body. And of course its signature rattle. Now this is all a lot to remember so head to clickorlando.com right now to see this full guide and be sure to bookmark it to take on your next outdoor adventure. You don't need any snakes scares. Hope I don't need Book that one. <laughs> yeah. Marks. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, be remain calm enough on an outdoor adventure to pull up the bookmark, but a good idea. But if you do name the black racers that live at your house, it makes them less startling when they pop out. Oh, okay. is that the case? That's, that's why that's we name the them the psychology all. behind yes. it. My yes. question is, I mean, how do you even get close enough to see what color eyes they are? I mean, I'm just me. running the other way. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Just avoid them completely if you can. Mm -hmm. All right, well, the Better Business Bureau says to watch out for some new schemes pretending to be from your cable companies. They're tricking consumers around the country into parting with their money. Hillary Lane tells us what to watch out for. For Will Robertson, the scam began with this text message offering a discount on his DirecTV account. He called the attached number to hear the pitch. You will have 50% off of your bill for the next two years. You'll also get the NFL ticket. He paid the salesman $425 with a prepaid card as instructed. The next day, he realized he'd been scammed. I said, something's not right because I checked my TV. I didn't get the premium channels. Dana Mead fell for a similar con from a caller who claimed to work for AT&T. He offered to reduce the cost of her plan in exchange for an upfront payment. He acted very smooth as if he knew what he was doing. He'd done, he'd done this, you know, all the time. It's part of his job. Mead paid him $270 with a gift card. A lot of people do fall for it. Catherine Hutt is with the Better Business Bureau. They want you to, uh, to act before you've had time to think, before you've had time to talk to a family member. Um, and so a uh, sense of urgency is another thing that we see a lot. Hutt says requests for untraceable payments are usually the red flag. If they only ask for prepaid credit cards, that's a big sign that this is a scam. Yeah, prepaid debit cards or gift cards are just never used for legitimate debt collection. Hutt says if you're interested in an offer but not sure it's real, resist the pressure to pay immediately. Hang up and call the customer service number on your bill to confirm. Hillary Lane, CBS News, New York. Yeah, it's better to call direct yourself. Yes, yes, and those calls. Hmm. These days, it seems like more women are getting into aviation. And that wasn't the case decades ago. In the 1960s, one local woman had to face her fear to become a pilot. I was terrified of airliners. I wouldn't set foot in one. Some of the best years of 92-year-old Betty Hostler's life were spent in the air. Her story is coming up. Plus, today marks another major step to strengthen Florida's distracted driving laws. Up next, a live preview from News 6 Matt Austin, who has been leading our push to drive change. Dead. Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 9. 
News 6 is pushed to drive change and strengthen Florida's distracted driving laws continues today. The Senate will now consider legislation that would make Florida a hands-free state behind the wheel. We've already seen a big change this week. Yesterday, the House overwhelmingly voted to make texting behind the wheel a primary offense. It was a landmark achievement in our journey. And this is a brief timeline of how far we've come. In November of 2016, we launched our driving change initiative. In March of last year, there was a roadblock. The Senate put the brakes on the texting while driving bill. But then, late last year, two bills were filed aimed at ending all forms of distracted driving. And that brings us to where we are today. And a journey could not have been possible without News 6 anchor Matt Austin. And he's joining us again from Tallahassee. And Matt, take us back through kind of your journey and the journey of this bill and how it all became kind of your own personal mission. Well, it all started about two and a half years ago. I was driving home from work late, about midnight, stopped at a stoplight, and I remember hearing this really loud noise. That's it. And then I woke up. In the middle of the intersection I was sitting in, I had blood dripping all over the back of my head and uh, people were screaming on the sidewalks, telling me to pull off to the side. I didn't know what was going on. I uh, ended up getting taken to the hospital and I remember the police officer in my hospital room, uh, you know, I, I, I said, hey, what was this guy doing? Was he drinking? What was going on? And he said, no, uh, he was texting. And I said, is he in jail? Because he destroyed my car and jacked up my head. And he goes, well, you can't arrest stupid, is what he told me in that room. And then later when I looked at the report, it turned out he hadn't even gotten a ticket from this. And it's partially because of Florida's weak texting and driving laws. And ever since then, I drive around. I see nothing but texting and driving. And people know that they're not going to get punished for it. So, of course, they're just going to do it. And uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to be teaching my oldest daughter how to drive. And really, it terrifies me. So we're hoping to get some real change, some change that could save some lives and make our roads just a little bit safer. Yeah, I remember you saying my girls, my three girls are always back there. And that night, they thankfully weren't there. So, I mean, this has certainly been the big mission. Yeah. And you've had to testify not once, but in, twice in just two years. I mean, has your stance, you feel, differed this year round? Uh, my stance has stayed pretty much the same, uh, that people need to be... Uh, staying off their cell phones. You know, driving is not a right, it is a privilege, and we have rules for a reason. We have speed limits, we have stop signs. It's not too much to ask uh, to just be looking at the road, I don't think. I will say this building has changed since we first started. When we first started coming here to Tallahassee, I would I have video of me walking through this very area saying, hey, can I talk to you about texting and driving? And people lawmakers literally walking away or nearly sprinting away from me. Nobody wanted to touch the issue. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody knew what was going on with it. It died in committee year after year. Uh, and finally, after a lot of poking and prodding and uh, getting some really good teammates around here, lawmakers are finally paying attention. And you can tell uh, there's a lot of importance behind this bill this year. They're paying a lot of attention to it, and they're actually talking about it, which is so different than a few years ago. Yeah, Matt, and Florida State Representative Jackie Toledo, who wrote the bill, I mean, did, were you able to talk to her yesterday? Yeah, I talked to her quite a bit, actually. Uh, her and Emily Slosberg, uh, they have been running this thing together for years, trying to get texting and driving. Last year, they were devastated that, you know, the House vote last year was actually even more convincing than this year. It was 112 to 2 uh, for the same bill. But the Senate, they dropped the ball. One guy in one committee, the Appropriations Committee, would not let the bill through, so essentially killing it for the whole state. This year that's not going to happen. This morning the Senate is expected to finally take up this bill on the floor. It is the fourth bill on the agenda, and we are all waiting in eager anticipation to see what is going to happen. All right, Matt, thank you so much for everything you've done so far. And I know you'll be there watching. And, of course, we'll have more coming up uh, starting at, uh, at the noon show. Thank you so much, Matt. And it certainly is encouraging. So in yes. less than 30 minutes, they're set to take up that vote in the Senate. And it, like he said, it's the fourth one in line. So. Yeah. Fingers crossed here. Yes, hopefully some good news. It has been quite a journey to it watch. Really and so it is so wonderful to see mm -hmm. so much progress being made.
In the 1960s, it wasn't really common to have a female pilot, and really it's still not that common. But for one local 92-year-old woman, her way of dealing with the fear of flying, well, was becoming a pilot, defying the perception women had at that time. News 6 at 9's Carolina Cardona shares her story with us. It wasn't something most women at the time did. My boss said there are two things that don't belong in an airplane and one is women. Flying airplanes in the early 1960s. We were all in dresses and skirts. There isn't a pair of slacks to be seen. But 92-year-old Betty Hostler says nothing was going to stop her. We were so happy and we all stuck together and we didn't care what they say. We just plowed ahead. Or the women in the 99's organization, a group of female pilots Betty is a part of. But Betty didn't always love flying. I was terrified of airliners. I wouldn't set foot in one. That all changed in 1959, when in her 30s, Betty took aviation classes. Her best friend had moved a thousand miles away, so Betty figured she could fly herself to visit. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. The I, idea just came to me. I knew absolutely nothing. She says her parents didn't support the idea. I thought it was the dumbest thing they ever heard of, and, but I persevered. I really wanted to do this. So she did. Soon after learning how to fly, Betty bought her first single-engine plane for $700. My first one was, a t we called them a tail draggers, with the, the tail wheel in the back. They were very difficult to land. Her determination gave her some of the best years of her life. It was the most freedom. I have ever experienced, I was just mad about it. The most wonderful experiences in meeting the best friends and going to places I would never have seen. Places like Canada, Nicaragua, and Mexico. In the 90s, Betty was an official with the Angel Derby, a competition where women had to start or stop in a foreign country. Although Betty didn't make aviation her career, she encourages the girls from today's generation to consider it a career path. If they need anything, see, I would say, see the 99s. There is financial help and scholarships being offered from us all the times. It's absolutely wonderful. I wouldn't know all the people I know. I wouldn't have been to any of the places I've been to if it weren't for my own little airplane. There are so many girls now, and if there are one, want a career, they couldn't have a better. Carolina Cardona, News 6 at 9. Wow. Yeah, she's certainly inspiring. And, you know, for getting results in our schools, I went to Seminole High School not too long ago right. where they have an aviation program, and one of their goals is to recruit more women into the aviation industry. And like she was saying, if you want a career, you can't have a better one than yeah. that. Yeah. And she, you know, at 92, you're wondering, well, who's right. her hero? She says Harriet Quimby, the first woman to earn a pilot's license back in 1911, the first woman to fly across the English Channel, is her hero. And uh, she owns seven planes. Miss Betty. Oh, wow. Well, that's career. something. Miss yeah. Betty is, you know, she's, she's kicking butt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, every Wednesday we have a doctor in to answer those lingering health-related questions. These are the questions that are often typed into Google so people can avoid asking them at appointments. So up next, Kirsten O'Connor will ask some sex-related questions for an OBGYN. You're watching News 6, getting results for all of Central Florida on air and on our free News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival. Thousand. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. We're looking at a variety of medical topics with our new News 6 at 9 segment, Ask a Doctor. And sometimes these topics can be a little uncomfortable. We know that there are times it's kind of awkward to discuss what's going on with your body or with a doctor. But the best way to get results for yourself is to know what's normal and what's not. That's right. So parents, maybe you have some little ears in the room. It might be a good time to get them busy with something else somewhere else. Because morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor is here now with an OBGYN to talk about sexual health. I am here with Orlando Health's Dr. Christine Greaves. She has been with us before for Ask a Doctor. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. And before we get into the nitty gritty here, mm -hmm. we do want to talk about 
consensual adult relationships. Yes. That's what we'll be discussing with this segment today. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that people have those questions answered. You know, I know yes. you get people coming in all the time as an OBGYN who are maybe a little nervous about talking yes. about their bodies. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's talk about maybe those symptoms and things that you should look out for that could be warning signs that something bigger is happening. Great. Yes, sounds perfect. So what's one of those things that maybe you should look out for? Let's say you just got into a new relationship, you're thinking, I don't feel normal, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. What are some of the warning signs? Right. So I would ask myself, if in a new relationship, um, have I been tested? Has my partner been tested? And then if that's not the case, I would definitely go seek your doctor to go get that done. Um, and if you do have certain concerns, you know, if you're sore or have any changes down there, then that's when you start to ask yourself, start to wonder, and then you may want to bring it to medical attention. And how long should you wait? I'm sure there are people out there who would say, uh, well, this is no big deal. It's only been a few days. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just wait until next week. Right. So that's a great question. So if it's just a little bit of soreness, for example, then you could wait a day or two. And if it persists, that's when you need to go see your doctor. Um, so, but if you do notice any changes down there, burning, irritation, uh, concerns when you're going to the bathroom, that's when it, it isn't something that should wait. Now this weekend is actually the AIDS walk and we've had Hope and Help on here on awesome. New 6 at 9 a couple yeah. of times to talk about mm -hmm. how to protect yourself, how to yes. make sure that you're getting the testing that you need. Um, what are some of those more serious issues that could be lingering if you don't get the help after recognizing those symptoms? That's great to ask. Okay, so some of the more serious concerns could be starting with your urinary tract. I mean, you could have a urinary tract infection. And if you have a urinary tract infection, then that can go all the way up to your kidney. So that's important to get it addressed. Or you could have an infection that isn't necessarily symptomatic at first, meaning you don't know if you have it, and then slowly it can start causing wreaking havoc in your bodies and causing a lot of pain. So I would say pain, changes in the way you feel down there, um, whether it's going to the bathroom or not. Or if it, if, basically, if you're noticing things that are different, that's when it's important to bring it to your doctor's attention. Because you don't feel normal. Correct. And that's what we're here for. Right. Yeah. So in these relationships that you're having that mm -hmm. are maybe a little new to you yes. and, and you're not sure who the other person is, you said you need to ask these people, have you been tested? Correct. You need to just have that conversation right Yes. Now. And see it. And see the medical uh, proof. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how do you have that conversation? Well, if you get to that point of your relationship, then what you hopefully you would feel comfortable to address that. And if not, then... I, well, yes, you get to that point and say, you know, blame it on your doctor. <laughs> blame it on me is what I tell my patients. Um, that um, there are a lot of things that you can have that you may not even know that you have. So it's best to start things off in that right track of both of you being tested so you can make sure you're both well before going forward with that. How so about, there's no worries. How, okay, that's a great answer, and I do love the blame it on your doctor thing. Yeah. Uh, how about <laughs> if, if you are just experiencing something that is a, I would say, a lesser symptom, let's say a burning or an itching sensation, mm -hmm. um, should you be worried enough to go to a doctor? If you've had that before, like if you have had certain things that respond to over-the-counter treatment before, then sure, you could try that. Um, try that treatment first if you know that you're in the clear for the infections, et cetera. Um, but if you haven't had it before and it's new, just give a call to us. That's what we're here for. And there's no walk of shame. I mean, that's what your OBGYN is here for. And if you don't have that comfortable of a relationship, then you may want to ask your friend who they go to. And maybe change doctors. Maybe, yeah. All right. Well, great answers. Mm -hmm. This is what this segment is all about, talking about those questions that maybe you're uncomfortable with. So we appreciate you giving Anytime. us the answers we thank need. You. Dr. Christine thank Greaves you. with Orlando Health. I will send it back to you, ladies. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kirsten and Dr. Greaves. And let's go ahead and take a live look outside. This is our Daytona Beach Beach Cam. So beautiful today. That's where mm -hmm. we'd like to be right now. That water's heating up nicely. Mm -hmm. Well, if we look around the world, though, it's news about flooding, Candace. Oh, yes. Yeah. Some areas of Quebec are now completely underwater. Look at this video here of a house surrounded. Uh, more rain is unfortunately in the forecast. The warm weather has melted a whole lot of snow, which is now increasing the amount of water. I mean, it all has to go somewhere, right? And then on top of the rain, uh, on, uh, along with the rain on top of it is another problem. More than 3,000 
homes have been flooded and the rain is now expected to last throughout Wednesday. So not only do you have the ice melting, but you have rain on top of that and it's areas like this that are so saturated, the, the issues are only going to continue to rise. And severe storms roll through the Dallas-Fort Worth area of, of Texas overnight, bringing heavy rain, strong winds, and yes, a lot of flash flooding here as well. Now this is video from Dallas Love Field Airport where some parking garages you can see here were flooded up to the windows, submerging cars, and unfortunately more storms are expected today. Well, that is your crazy flooding weather across the world. Now let's pinpoint Central Florida a little closer to home. We're talking dry conditions today and tomorrow. So if you have anything to do outdoors, it is it will be warm. It just won't be uh, very soggy. The mascot, look at your high for today, 88 degrees. We're running about seven to eight degrees above where we should be for this time of the year, but looking dry. Plenty of sunshine. Humidity, though, is back. If you haven't walked out the door just yet. I can guarantee you, you'll feel it the moment you walk out the door. And then along the coastline in Malabar, in Malabar, your temperature about 83 degrees by about 3, 4 o'clock. Also looking mostly dry. If you are planning on heading out to the beach, you saw that Daytona Beach camera. Picture perfect day, low rip current risk for today, high UV index. So make sure you are lathering up the sunscreen. And even with a low risk rip currents, make sure to swim by a lifeguard. All right, now let's check on your personalized pinpoint weather forecast. And we have the Mount Dora Blueberry Festival. That's this weekend, sat Saturday and Sunday by 12 p.m. Temperatures will be about 75. 3 o'clock will be about 83. Now, if you have a special event or day you'd like me to pinpoint for, send us your photos or videos along with your city, your date, your name, and why it's a special occasion, just head on over to clickorlando.com slash personalized pinpoint to submit them. And doesn't blueberries sound perfect for mm -hmm. today? Uh, temperature is about 88 degrees for today, near 90 tomorrow. Better chance of rain on Friday. Some strong storms could be possible. And then cooling and uh, slightly cooler, I should say, compared to 90, will be topping off about 84 degrees by your Saturday. But hopefully you get most of the rain out just in time for the weekend. But, you know, we do need the rain. All right. Have you ever been to the Blueberry Festival? Festival. Not it the one in Mount Dora. is so much fun. We went last year. Delicious pies. Oh, Sounds Michigan. like it. Yeah. Now I want a pie. Mm -hmm. From saving lives to serving the public, every day our first responders get results in our community. So much goes into their job, but they always seem to make time for the little things too. Well, first responders even make time for our four-legged friends, which is exactly what they did at the Pause for Peace Walk. We'll have a roundup of all the good stories that's coming up. You're watching News 6 Getting Results. We'll be right back. Your personalized pinpoint weather is brought to you by J.A. Edwards of America, your roofing specialist. Yes, i do it. Recently, deputies here in Brevard County spent the day checking gas pumps for skimmers and found almost two dozen skimmers inside the pumps. The technology the bad guys are using these days is incredible but so is the way that deputies are catching them and getting crime results. I'm Eric Von Aiken with this story today at 5. And you're taking a live look. All lanes eastbound I-4 at Maitland Boulevard are back open after about a four-hour shutdown. So if you're headed eastbound this morning, expect the delays, but the lanes are back open. All right, thanks, Steve. Yep. All right, ever forget to take the roast out of the freezer in time to defrost <laughs> it? No. Yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> also Guilty. me. Yes. <laughs> Tonight we're getting results for dinner with an instant pot balsamic pot roast. Mm, I still need to get an instant good. pot. I'm telling you, if you don't have one, you are missing that. out. You need to go get one today. The Mama Loves Food blog says she discovered this was possible when she had nothing but a frozen solid three pound roast in her freezer. Do you hear that? Yes. Okay. And put it in the instant pot and it makes magic like that. You can find the full recipe on clickorlando.com under the food section. That's why I love my Instant Pot. You're yeah, just yeah. like, oh, I forgot to do everything. Stick it in there, magic. Fast. It's great. Yes. Mm -hmm. We always love to get good news into our show, and that includes our first responders. Yes, they're always out in the community getting results for those in need. So Trooper Steve is here to share his favorite stories of the week with us. I know you got some good ones. Yes, lots of law enforcement helping to celebrate Easter with the little ones over the weekend. Here are some photos from the big Easter egg hunt at the Orlando Fire Museum. The Orlando Fire Department wished everyone a great holiday, and it looks like they had a great time with the kids also. A similar story down in Kissimmee where officers posted this. We had a great weekend with the Easter Bunny and the people who live and love the Oaks community. Hope everyone had a safe and beautiful holiday weekend as well. 
The St. Cloud Police Department posted these adorable oh. photos. I know, right? Officer Aww. McCormick and Al Mastica uh, rescued some baby ducks from a storm drain. Man, that sounds familiar. With the assistance of an off-duty animal control officer, thanks for their efforts, all the babies were reunited with Mama. That is awesome. I love the animal such, rescue. Such a spring yes. picture, yeah, right? right? <laughs> We've been talking about this great event, Pause for Peace. New Six team, uh, team members were out at Blue Jacket Park, and so were the Orlando police officers, mm -hmm. as well as Orange County Sheriff John Mina and Jax, his dog. That event for Harbor House of Central Florida raised money for the Paws Kennel at the shelter so that abuse survivors have somewhere to bring their pets when they leave abusive homes. The community guys raised more than $62,000 with our efforts for the shelter. Pretty awesome stuff. We want to hear your positive first responder stories. Also, you can share them with us over at ClickOrlando.com. Pause for peace. It was a great weekend for yes. that. And so many people made it out. Zoe, Justin's dog, was out there. But it's so important because so many people won't leave abusive situations because, their dog, love because for their of animal. their animals. And so it's so great that the community got results for mm -hmm. that. I love that. And the little duckies from the storm drain. I mean, <laughs> that's spring right there for yeah, you. Yeah, can't miss it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning on News 6 at 9. Join us again at noon for more news and weather. In the meantime, we break news on our mobile app at clickorlando.com. Rachel Rachel.